yo, a demon tried to possess me while I was channeling for Wyatt from Twin Paranormal. cool cats and kittens so today's video is going to be not as long as the other ones but i thought i would share a recent astral rum experience and to give like a preface essentially i was setting up to channel wyatt because all of you wanted me to read him from twin paranormal so i was like okay i'm gonna do that and you know as i was channeling I found myself in a fucked up situation. Now, let me also say this. Sometimes when I channel, and you guys will probably notice this, especially with one of the Twin Paranormal videos I did, like sometimes I get contamination from other spirits trying to intervene. Some of them want to be found, kind of like Dylan Rounds. Um, and then when I was channeling Dylan Rounds, I had another spirit that was nearby my vicinity trying to communicate with me. And so, yeah. So could it be because I was trying to get information about Wyatt possibly, or could it just be interference from, you know, things trying to get information to me or things trying to pretty much ruin my channel? I mean, all of that is possible, but yeah, so. Just so you know, I will be reading from my journal. So if you see me going like this, that is why. Because it's so extensive that I wanna make sure I get it all. I start channeling for Wyatt and I am plunged into like this meditative state where it's like I'm sleeping but I'm not sleeping. But then it eventually does turn into sleeping, essentially. I. I'm experiencing this from the point of view of a 12 year old girl with long, dirty blonde, light blonde hair and a ponytail. Her and her parents were doing an investigation on this building that was a black church that had multiple rooms and levels to it. The one level was the normal church part and had another large room that was used as a lounge area for students and workers with other rooms on the side of that room, which were small classrooms. Paranormal activity was going on, and so my family and I were there to investigate and help debunk it. My parents have me go in first to see what I feel so I don't get accidentally swayed by what they say. I am brought to the top of the stairs to the third floor and am face to face with a door with four symbols next to it that give me an extremely bad feeling. The first symbol looked like the Blair Witch symbol, which is interesting because we know in Twin Paranormal, all three of them have that tattoo. I'm pretty sure. I know the twins do, and I'm pretty sure some of you guys were saying that Wyatt also has it. So it was weird how that was the first symbol in the, um, the four symbol, like, whatever you want to call it. So it was that symbol, and then I don't remember the other three. I also feel a similar feeling behind me where this large black bush full of leaves is. As my parents walk up the stairs, my parents agree. However, my eyes shift downward to the first door that I passed, which is on the second floor. And it also has four symbols next to it going like this. However, the first symbol was literally like an eye, right? And then in the middle was like a dot. I point that out as well, but my parents agree that the door I was standing in front of gave the worst vibes. We walk inside and it's completely dark. Lights are all turned off, but it's freezing. We walk around looking for vents and a cross breeze to debunk the cold. Eventually, we find two vents blowing cold air. There's also another large black bush inside that's giving bad vibes. 
My mom and I find this circle cut out on the floor that's glowing orangey, yellowy, reddish, and has a lid halfway on it. Steam is coming out from it. It makes no sense as to like what it is, why it's there, what the purpose is. I put the lid fully on it thinking that's how it's supposed to be, but it starts to overheat and you can start seeing like steam coming out through the sides. My mom takes the lid off and looks for a power switch to turn it off because it's a fire hazard. She finds a plug and unplugs it, thereby turning it off. The lady priest, or whatever you want to call her, finds us. She's got short blonde hair, is tall, and is wearing priest robes. The lady takes us to the break room where there's a bunch of other people hanging around and doing some work. Everyone is wearing the same thing. It's like what priests and their assistants wear. And sorry, I don't know what they're called. Forgive me. The lady begins talking about this tarot reader and how what she's doing is dangerous. But because she can't see what I see, she wanted me to take a look to explain to them what was going on metaphysically, essentially to validate what the priest lady was trying to warn them about. The tarot reader now this this tarot reader is like a younger girl. She's given like, I don't know, 18 to 20 years old kind of vibes. She's got really short hair and it's like a blonde color. She's really like lanky and tall and skinny. But so she's sitting at the table with another girl giving a reading. My parents, the priest lady and I sit at the table to observe immediately. I see that the tarot reader doesn't have any boundaries set while reading, which is allowing anything and everything to come in and take control of her body. Right as I warn her about that, she begins to manifest right before my eyes. Although, based off of everyone's reactions, I'm the only one who can see it. First, it starts off with something that was not very strong or powerful, but as the seconds tick away, the manifestations get worse and worse. I start reciting, in Jesus' name, you shall leave this person. Immediately, the entity jumps into my mother, and she starts convulsing and manifesting. And when I say manifesting, I mean like showing signs of possession, like it's coming out through the person. This time, everyone sees it and begins to panic. We all grab her, place her on the table, hold her down, and began to pray over her in Jesus' name. The entity fought hard as it contorted her face into something grotesque and scary as she flailed around like a wild animal. One of the cards by her head said oil, which gave me the idea to get holy oil and put some on her forehead. I yell for the priest lady to get some. When we put the oil on her forehead, her face goes back to normal and she stops flailing around. However, it jumps to the next person, which was my dad. It was much easier to get it out of him, but before it jumped to me, I saw its face on one of the tarot cards. It was cobalt blue, like the card, until it got bigger and bigger and outgrew the card. The demon began to manifest in a full shadowy form, fading from blue to black. It had a spiky head, glowing red and yellow eyes, and like weird creepy teeth. And I will show a picture of the thing I saw. And I had it created, and this looks identical. Like, one of the best AI renditions so far that is as close as I could get as possible. The demon forces its way into my body, and I struggle to fight back. It makes me remember when I was possessed two or three years ago prior. And it's like a flashback with an, an astral experience, which is weird. But it's a flashback of the girl that I'm seeing through, like everything through. So three years prior. So if she was like 12 currently, three years from that, she's like nine. I was with my dad in some dark building with disco lights, like an arcade, with the fancy carpeting and then the color or stroby lights and loud music. We were leaving and I felt this nasty energy rush me and me lose control of myself. When it was happening, I instantly knew the situation and warned him as I asked for help. I could feel my face contorting and my body subtly losing control. 
I remembered the look on his face as the twirling lights would hit them. He was scared. Everything went black. I then found myself in some sort of institution that specialized in helping possessed children. There were so many young children and kids my age. They all were possessed and exhibited supernatural abilities and behaviors. From my perspective, it looked like a zoo, but with children. There were many attacking one another in these isolated rooms. Some were secured with metal bars like a jail, some had bulletproof glass, and some had no walls or any type of separation. Kids were peeing and pooping where they stood. Some were forcing animals to kill one another with their abilities. Some used psychic kinetic energy to attack other kids and the staff. The part where I was conscious I was being bathed and cleaned somewhat out in the open. I was brought into this room with large bulletproof glass windows and it felt like I was being bathed like a dog. When I was done, everything went black again and I snapped back to the current situation where I was fighting off the current possession of the demon that was trying to take a hold of me. The struggle felt like an immense drug withdrawal and was painful while parts of my body spasmed and throbbed. I kept hearing a voice tell me, let it in. I refused. The voice then tried to trick me by trying to get me to agree to something else, which I forget exactly like the details, but I refused again. It was so manipulative that it made me second guess if I made the correct decision, making me fear that I chose the incorrect answer and that because of the answer, it had permission to possess me. But I stuck to my guns and remained strong and fought through it. That's where the dream or astral realm experience ends. Now, there are many lessons in this experience that I have actually learned over time already. So, for example, ter terror reader, terror, tarot readers. It is important that you always cleanse your space before and after you do a session, that you set up boundaries, and that you don't just let anything or everything communicate with you. Hence the boundaries, because that can happen even when you channel without cards. So, you know, that's very important. Number two, with the boundaries thing, the person that you're reading for. Yeah, it's possible that like you can fight off the demon or it doesn't even have to be a demon. There are other entities that can possess a person. But nonetheless, the person you're reading for, if there is an opening for something negative to jump them or attach to them, it can't. So lesson number two, lesson number three. I noticed just in the several experiences that I've had with demonic entities that they will do anything to try to possess you, okay? And especially if you're a child, they are more vulnerable. And it feels like in this experience, the reason why she had these abilities to begin with, I feel like she had like a predisposition to it, but because she was possessed the first time, that's how she got the psychic medium abilities that she had currently in the astral realm experience. I don't know who this girl is. Could it be for someone for another case that's unrelated to Wyatt? Absolutely. Like I said, that happens all the time. It's just weird that the Blair Witch symbol that they all have on Twin Paranormal you know, showed up in the astral realm experience. And sometimes too, when I look at certain things, symbols can trigger an experience or a past life or anything. The whole thing with demons being manipulative, they can gaslight you so hard that they can make you second guess your correct decision. Even if the correct decision you know without a doubt is correct, it can be something as so simple as them convincing you that the grass isn't green, it's purple. They are so good with their manipulative techniques that they can get you to believe anything. And it tried so hard. And, you know, it tried in that experience. So that's another thing to take from this. Like I said, I've had this happen to me before. Um, I've had it happen to me when I was in that hotel in North Carolina. 
I had this happen to me when I had that experience where a demon convinced me to sell my soul. However, you know, that situation's fixed, but essentially it tricked me by using friends and threatening their lives. Um, it's convinced me by threatening the lives of family members, um, my pets, like they will do anything to manipulate you and convince you to sell your soul. So it's important not to give up or to give in. And it's important to always debunk things. There are things that could be really obvious that maybe the person seeking the advice doesn't have that outsider's point of view and they just need that. And that's another thing to take into consideration. What they might consider to be paranormal activity might be very debunkable. And it's always important to try to debunk when you can. Um, there's just so many lessons that one can take from this experience. And that's why I wanted to share this with you. Not only to share like my perspective of what it is like sometimes as a medium, but the little lessons within, even though that actual experience felt extremely real and was very scary because at first I'm like, oh my God, is it possessing the girl or is it actually possessing me? But it wants me to believe that it's actually possessing me because if I fully believe that it's possessing me, even though, you know, it's really not, that's all it takes for it to actually possess a person. It can convince you even if it's not doing it. And then when it convinces you, that's also like permission of allowing it to do that kind of thing. And you don't want to do that. Again, very important. But yeah, guys, what do you think of that? I'm just saying that I could literally write my own movies based on my actual experiences. So if there's like a producer out there or a script writer, I can help with my real fucked up experiences. <laughs> but anyway, um, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Hopefully I'll get that white video out to you for this week. So again, peace out Girl Scout and all you cool cats and kittens.